What's up YouTube, this is Demkeys and today you're going to learn about firing projectiles. Now usually when it comes to shooting in Unity, you don't actually need to fire projectiles. Using the Raycast method is much more simpler. However, there may be situations where you actually need to fire a projectile. In those cases, you can use this method. So let's begin. First of all, we're going to create a cube. Click Game Object, 3D Object, Cube. Rename this cube to Ground. Change its position to 0 on all axes. And change its scale to 150 on X, 0 0.1 on Y, and 150 on Z. Select the direction directional light and drag it down a little so it's not obstructing our view. Next let's create the player. Click game object, 3D object sphere and using surface snapping bring it to the surface of the ground and then raise it up a little bit. Rename the sphere to player, add a rigid body component to it, uncheck use gravity and freeze the rotation on the x, y and z axes. Next make the main camera a child of the player object and change the position to zero on all axes and then drag it a little to the front and a little up. Create an empty game object within the main camera object. Call it gun and this is an empty game object so let's give this an icon so that we can see it this is where our bullet will actually be instantiated from so drag this a little at the back and now our player is ready next we need to create the bullet so create an empty game object rename it to bullet and currently judging by these values I would say it's quite far away but we cannot make it out because it's an empty game object so change the position to zero on all axes and now we know the object is nearby here so just bring it a little closer and within the bullet object create a sphere and and change its scale to 0.2 on all axes. Move it a little to the front and then create a cylinder within the same bullet object. And just like the sphere, change the scale on all axes to 0.2. Rotate it and reposition it a little bit so that collectively this looks like a bullet. Now make sure you have aligned the sphere and cylinder in such a way that the resulting bullet is actually pointing in the forward direction of the bullet game object. To confirm that, make sure you're looking at the local axis of the object, not the global axis. So just click this and change it to local. And now we are sure that the bullet is facing in this bullet game object's forward direction. Create a material in your project panel, call this bullet material and change its color to black and drag and drop this material onto the sphere and cylinder. So our bullet is now black. Select the bullet game object and add a rigid body to it and drag and drop the bullet into the project panel to make it a prefab. You can now delete the bullet game object from the scene. Next, we need to make our bricks. So click game object, 3D object, cube. Using surface snapping, bring the cube to the surface of the ground. Rename it to brick. Attach a rigid body component to it and create another material in your project panel. Call it brick material. Drag and drop this onto the brick game object and change its color to, let's say, something close to red. Then drag and drop the brick game object into the project panel to make it a prefab. And now I'm going to make a couple of duplicates of this brick and arrange them so collectively it looks like a wall. I'm going to speed up this process to save some time. All right, so our wall is now ready. Next, we need to create our player script. So select the player game object and add a new script, call it player script 02 and open it up in mono develop. We're going to start by creating our variables, public float move force, private rigid body our body, public game object bullet, public transform gun, public float shoot rate, public float shoot force and private float shoot rate timestamp. In the start method type our body equals get component rigid body and in the update method float edge equals input dot get axis raw horizontal multiplied by move force. Make a duplicate of this line and this will be float v equals input dot get axis raw vertical multiplied by move force then our body dot velocity equals new vector 3 h on the x axis v on the y axis and 0 on the z axis next if input dot get key down or in this case it should be get key key code dot space if time dot time is greater than shoot rate timestamp this is basically our logic for creating a shoot rate. Then game object go equals game object. This is typecasting because the instantiate method returns an object, not a game object. Instantiate, we want to instantiate the bullet prefab and we want to instantiate it at our gun's position. So gun.position and we want the rotation to be the same as our gun's rotation. So gun.rotation. Next, geo.getComponent, rigidbody.addForce, gun.forward, multiply by shoot force and finally shoot rate timestamp equals time dot time plus shoot rate so we're gonna go over this real quick first of all we are receiving input from the player on the horizontal and vertical axes then we are setting the velocity of our player based on that input and then we are checking if the space key is currently being pressed 
If so, then we check if time dot time is greater than shoot rate timestamp. Now shoot rate timestamp is going to be zero initially and time dot time is basically the total amount of time that the game has been running. So if time dot time is greater than shoot rate timestamp, then our bullet will be instantiated. It will be instantiated at the gun's position and in the same orientation as our gun. Next, we'll access the bullet's rigid body component so that we can call add force and basically make the bullet move forward. And finally, we set a new shoot rate timestamp, which would be time dot time plus shoot rate. Hit save, go back to Unity, and let's set the values for these variables. So move force should be 10. Our bullet game object should be the bullet prefab. Our gun transform should be the gun game object's transform. The shoot rate should be 0 0.5, and the shoot force should be 14,000. Now select the bullet prefab and add a bullet script to it. Call it bullet script 02. Open it up in mono develop, and this is going to be a really simple script. So public float expiry time, and in the start method, destroy game object after expiry time. So this is basically going to make sure that the bullet is destroyed after the expiry time has passed. Hit save, go back to Unity. You might want the expiry time to be a little longer, but for the purpose of this example, I'm going to set it to three seconds. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, select the bullet prefab and under its rigid body, change the collision detection method to continuous dynamic because these bullets will be traveling at a very high speed. So if the collision detection mode is not continuous dynamic, the bullet might go through the wall without actually colliding. Also, a side note, I had to make my wall a little smaller because given the fact that I'm recording, too many rigid bodies in the scene were causing the entire game to go really slow. So hit play. And as you can see, the projectiles are now being fired. Now the reason why I've kept the gun game object behind the camera is because if we keep it in front of the camera, we'll be able to see the bullet being instantiated. Given our current shoot rate, that may not seem like such a bad thing. However, if we change the shoot rate to let's say 0 0.01, the bullets will be instantiated at a very fast rate. So in that case, it will look like there's a bullet in front of the camera at all times. This is why I've placed the gun behind the camera. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you would like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen. And in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner, you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.